Welcome back guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're looking at Bitcoin and the possibility of being wrong. So before we get stuck in, make sure you've hit the like button down below, right here. Subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, follow me on Instagram for daily Q&As and of course Twitter for cryptocurrency news updates. Let's dive into the charts. All right, so I've got Bitcoin here. Yesterday we were looking at the potential of Bitcoin falling off the cliff edge. Now, I can hear you already saying, well, this guy's an idiot. He's always talking about one side and then the other. What I have to say to that is I take a trader's view and an investor's view. Plus, I look at short term and medium and long term as well. I suggest to anyone else that they should do the same if they have different views. So be it. But I take uh, both sides. I look at short and long term and I want to be prepared for both directions. Now, if you're just a 10-year long-term investor, then this doesn't apply to you. You'll buy Bitcoin at whatever price. You probably don't care whether you get it at 32000 or 22000 or 62000 But if you want to be able to get a better price, maybe look at some longer-term swings, then I suggest doing something like this and just looking at a chart to understand whether you are going to be going down or up or have a plan for both directions. Have a plan for in case it goes down, have a plan for in case it goes up. That's what I've learned over the last 15 years. It's better to be prepared, doesn't matter which direction it goes in, even sideways, rather than just have some stubborn view that we're only gonna be going one direction and that's that, okay? So that's what I'm seeing now. That's what I wanna understand. That's what I wanna talk more about because it is better to be prepared. Now, I'm sure those questions will continue to come up, the comments around this guy's just trying to take both sides. But if you want to be in the game long term, I suggest you do the same. You don't have to do exactly as I'm doing. You don't have to take the same view as I'm taking. All I'm saying is look at both sides. Look at the potential of the market going lower and what you will do if it does that. Then look at the potential for the market going higher and what you will do if it does that. You can start to see that these are just all equations in your head. They're just if-then statements. If this happens, I will do this. If this happens, I will do that. That's all we've got to do. So the potential of being wrong Let's throw on some lines now. And what we got first, we had the weekly close. Weekly close came in at 31,776. Call it 31,800, round number. Now, if we're wrong, the first thing I want to see is the market attempt to rally and break 36,000. This is this purple box here. This has been the level that we've been watching and the market has hit it and been rejected multiple times. So we see that as a strong resistance point at the moment. So I want to see it come up at least if it tests it, not fall back too far and not on strong volume either. I want to see a weak fall. Then I want to see it break through that pretty quickly. Break through, possibly retest or come up to the next level of around 42, 43,000, which is the next resistance zone, which has already been set for us. It was set back in January. There's a high of 42K. Then we had another attempt at 42. This was back in mid-June when the market bounced. Very, very weak rally into 42. So it made it to 41,300. Fell away pretty strongly and we haven't been able to recover uh, anywhere near close to that ever since. Should the market then break above that? This is all in the case in case we are wrong. These are the things that I want to see. I want to see a break of 36. I want to see a break of 42, 43K. I'll see how it gets... Uh, I'll see how the market reacts when it gets to that point. So now we've broken these two uh, very critical levels. Next level is 46 and a half, 47. Okay, so this is a 50% range, top to bottom. Midway point, 46,700. That's why I say around 46, 47K. There is a low here at 47,000. There are some uh, bottoms and closes at around that point too. So this one's 46,000. Here's a close at 45,200. So this level is going to be some sort of resistance as well. Now, if the market slices straight through, very, very strong, great stuff. But I'm prepared in case it doesn't. Now, this is also a 50% level. So it's got a lot of work to do to get above that 46, 47K level. And of course, the top of this bar, which is $46,648, that is going to be the flipping point. We looked at this and I mentioned it every day of the end of April, most of May was this period here. There was a similar bar, a daily bar in April when the market tanked and I was looking at $60,500. The market had to break. All the receipts are on the channel. You can go back and check out daily videos from that point every day. 
If we break 60,500, I'll get bullish. 60,500, 60,000, etc., etc. The point of that bar is that it was a change in behavior. And you can see this bar here. That was a massive change. We were going down, but we got huge volume, big drop. Market has not recovered. This is a very critical bar that we can see just here. So 17th of May. Now, they're not in colors, but I can do that for people who really want colors on candles. This bar right here, red. And we need to get above the high of that. So the high is 46,648. Round number 46,700. If you want to take it a little step further and make it a full round number, $47,000. That's why I've got multiple prices that I'm looking for here. So if we are wrong, the market just it cannot push any lower with all of this bad news and release of Grayscale Bitcoin Trust shares coming out today and the rest of this week and uh, you know the bans and everything else that's going on and we still can't push this market down and the market starts to move the opposite direction. First thing I want to see is 36K. That was a, a, a balancing point between this high and this low. Next thing I want to see, a break above the 42K because that was the level that we tried to test and could not get above. That's the most that we have uh, done in this bearish period. That's that's the furthest that Bitcoin could push during this period. So that's a very critical point as well. Third critical point is that 47K. So if we are wrong, market needs to break this level, then the second point, 42, then the third level, 46, then start to base out above the 47, 46K level. You know, do its little dance up there and then start to make its way higher. That's a long way from where we are now. In terms of percentage, 52%. So we could forego 52% of uh, potential gains in order to get the confirmation that the market is going up. Now, the beauty about that is we've been using our dollar cost averaging plan and we've been buying up Bitcoin at an average price of around $34,500, which would mean at around $34,500 to the confirmation of a bull market, uh, at around that 47k means we now have 36k profit on our dollar cost averaging plan that we got into during this very fearful scary time in the market so that is the way i use and play the market and use it as an investor i'm forcing myself to be buying at lows when it's scary and potentially if we're wrong on our view that the market's going to keep falling a little further then we've bought in and the market goes up we're in profit then we can continue to buy more dollar cost average in on the confirmation that the market is bullish. Now, we've talked about many, many times the bearish scenarios. You know, this could fall, break the 28K levels. Then we're looking at anywhere between 20 and 28K. There are a couple of levels in here, but, you know, I've talked about that plenty and plenty of times. And then we would just keep using our dollar cost averaging plan. Someone from Twitter has done a fantastic tool, created a fantastic tool for us here. This is a dollar... Bitcoin fear and greed index purchase plan. Um, so thank you very much to Daniel. Uh, I won't say the last name in case they don't want a ton of people following them, but thank you to Daniel. He posted it publicly um, and he put it in one of the previous posts. So thanks very much. All we got to do is change the date range up here. Use You can even change the threshold so you can go back and test anything on this plan. Very, very handy. Um, the thing you can't put in is, of course, filters, but you know, you got to do some work for yourself. Check out some other filters, come up with some ideas. If I put this down to 14 or 13 fear and greed, basically we're looking at uh, if the fear and greed index was at 13, they're the times that I'll be buying. So you can see all here, all of these points here, sorry, the blues and all of these points back here in blue as well. So it only goes back to 1st of January, 2020. Hopefully you can increase it to go to the entire fear and greed um, data that we have from the fear and greed website. Um, alternative.me, I believe it is. And then you can see all of your returns further down. So the, the total amount that you've invested, how many times would you like to purchase? Let's say 100 times that I would like to purchase. How much do you want to purchase? A thousand, maybe you only want to purchase a hundred dollars. So that will adjust all of your total investments. It'll adjust your gross, your profit, your return. Pretty, pretty handy if you want to have some quick uh, way of back testing a market. This is precisely what you need to be doing to create yourself a long-term plan that you can you can basically see that there are some profits on it and you want to use something that has been profitable in the past not to say that it will be profitable in the future but 
the way I look at the market is I look at history and I believe I'm going to be far more profitable if I've seen these sort of patterns happen before moving forward so that I've got something to work with. Essentially, that's the way people use news and fundamentals. You know, something has worked in the past. We expect it might work in the future. But all I'm saying here is not to get too carried away with different ideas. Check this out. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below so you guys can use the tool, DMK Medina at retool.com. Super handy tool. So thanks very much to Daniel. As you can see from yesterday, our extreme fear was still on the market, but we're at 24. So it wasn't a purchase day. Our plan, we come out at 31,000. Today is 800. So we're down about 7.5%. And uh, thank you very much to everyone that commented yesterday about the different options around what should we do if we were to, to break down beneath the support levels. And a really good comment that came up was if we were, it just depends on your, your strategy, looking forward, whether you're a trader or an investor. If you're an investor, you probably don't care and you just want to keep buying up and you've got a reason to be buying at particular points, obviously being 15 or under. But if you're a trader, maybe a six to a 12 month uh, uh, outlook on the market, then maybe you do want to sell out and then buy back um, as the market continues to fall. So someone said they would never do that. You know, this is how the poor stay poor, but this is the reason here. Some people may be out of capital and that's why they ask, when should I sell? Because they want to sell out their position and then use that capital to buy back a little bit lower. Some people still have more cash and they don't care if they go into a 30, 40% loss, they will continue to dollar cost average into the market. One last thing I wanted to bring up around if we are wrong is the potential of how high this could go. So we have looked at these levels, 36K, looked at 42, 43K, and then the 46, 47K. Now going back in history, how far has the market run up? We've seen it do these levels. We've seen it do 100%. We have seen it do about 60 odd percent, 57%. We've seen it do 47%. And then we get smaller and smaller. So we get to in, into the 30s and the 25s and then as small as sort of 10, 15% uh, in these last points. So, and then the, then the market still failed. So if we do that again from our current low, run it up 100%, that would get us pretty damn high. 100% takes us to around 58K and it still failed. I don't think it's going to be anything like that for for this part of the market, but I could see us going somewhere around 60, 65% and there's still the possibility of it failing from that point. So it can still fake us out. Then the next level that we have at 42, 43 is around 47%. And then the little one at 36K is still a rise of around 27 to about 30% from the low, not from the current price, but from the current major low. So there are the levels that I'll be looking for. The market could still run up that far. People saying, is this wrong? Is is the plan, has the plan failed? Should we have bought more in the low 20s and low 30s? Because now we see the market up 30, 40, 50%. All I'm saying is in the past, the market has done bigger moves than your 30 or 40%. It's even done a move here of, 60 to 70% from the low before it tanked again. And so I wouldn't be getting too worried about a market going up 30, 40, 50% unless I saw it break through some resistance levels and then begin to form support above the resistance levels. So we'll keep following this as we always do. Thank you very much to Daniel for the fear and greed index tool. That thing is amazing. And if you guys want to use it, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. So Thanks to the community for putting that out and um, developing these tools. It's really, really handy. So we'll continue to add to that. If you guys are able to create things like that, let us know on Twitter and uh, I'll be sure to share it with the community. So thanks once again. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, hit all so that you can be updated with the content as we progress through the bear market. And I'll see you guys at the next video or on Instagram for daily Q&As, and of course, Twitter, where a lot of that fantastic alpha is kept. Catch you guys next time. Until then, have more fun to get more done.